Hey guys, it's Virtual Nunchucks here, and I want to talk to you about Detroit Become Human. Uh, I bought this game last week. I was going to buy it when it came out, around uh, the time uh, uh, God of War came out, but I chose to buy God of War first. I bought this one last week, and I wanted to give you my opinion and my thoughts on it. Um, in case you don't know what Detroit Become Human is, it is a story uh, and a a game written and directed by David Cage, the same gentleman who directed uh, Beyond Two Souls, Heavy Rain, this game, and one other one that I can't think of off the top of my head right this moment. Um, and we'll get to David Cage here in just a minute. Um, but let's talk about first the graphics and the characters. The characters are as follows. You'll have Kara, uh, Kara rather, who you see on the screen there. Uh, she is an android who takes care of the little girl Alice that you see on the screen and uh, her job is a housekeeper droid she takes care of the house cleaning the house doing the laundry uh, you know doing the food uh, helping with homework stuff like that and uh, taking care of the kid that's her job you have Marcus who is a caretaker of an elderly uh, wealthy artist in Detroit his job is to uh, help him in everyday life, take his medicine, make sure he has his food, uh, you know, help him in any way possible uh, to take care of him as an elderly man. Uh, and then you have Connor, who is a deviant hunter, who is on the screen now. Uh, Connor is uh, a deviant hunter. And by deviant, I mean anybody that deviates from their program in any way, shape, or form. If androids commit a crime, if they uh, do their own or harm, if they if they go missing, whatever the case may be, it is Connor's job, along with his partner, human partner Hank, to track down these deviants, to uh, to prosecute them, and to find out what is causing them to become deviant. Uh, that is his whole purpose. That is what he is programmed to do. Um, let's talk about the graphics first. The graphics uh, are gorgeous. This was done on a PS4, just a regular standard PS4, on a 1080p uh, television. And I have to say that uh, the facial expressions, the modeling, uh, you will believe a character is angry. You will believe a character is sad, happy, amused, frustrated, whatever emotion you want to put in there you will believe that that character is uh, because they they did a motion capture uh, of the f of the person fully from their face with the little dots all the way down to the very movements that they make with their hands and things like that so you will absolutely buy into the facial expressions and the lifelike uh, 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 believability of the of the characters that you see on screen the lighting in this game uh, whether it's the Sun coming off glistening off of a skyscraper in downtown Detroit or a train or or playing through the leaves of a tree uh, and hitting the sidewalk you will believe that you are in the middle of downtown Detroit on a sunny day uh, the rain puddles uh, the same way uh, the sound uh, the sound that the rain makes, the sound that the cars make, the sound that the birds make, everything just makes you believe that you're in this world. Um, it is absolutely amazing. The word, the electric words of the of the futuristic cars, the trains, the gunfire that you hear uh, uh, has the right weight to it, has the right uh, right atmosphere. It just creates. Detroit in 2038 and you will believe you're there um, it's just it's just a gorgeous and unbelievable uh, game um, the voice acting in this game is top-notch you have you have uh, Clancy Brown who is Hank he plays the partner of, of, of Connor here and uh, Clancy Brown in case you don't know he was recently on uh, Sleepy Hollow on Fox uh, he played a character there, uh, and he also played in the Highlander series as the uh, main bad guy for the first Highlander, Christopher Lambert, uh, and uh, and and he were the uh, main characters. <laughs> he was the main bad guy for that particular first movie. 
Um, so, you know, he's he's he does his his role really really well. Uh, they got the guy from Alien to play Carl, the artist that Marcus takes care of. They got they got Valerie Curry to play Kara. They got Brian. Oh goodness, what's his last name? Oh goodness, I can't think of his last name now. Anyway, Brian plays plays Connor. I mean, these guys. They. They make you believe these guys. Uh, these characters, you know, there wasn't a single dropped line. Uh, there wasn't a single like time where I thought, "Oh, that was really just bad delivery." It, the actors were top, top notch. I mean, really, really top notch. Um, the only exception to that would have been probably Alice a few times, and she's the little girl that Kara takes care of. Um, they don't give her a whole lot to work with unless she's scared uh, and, and upset about something, which when she's scared and upset about something, uh, you will believe that she's scared and she, she's upset, so you'll believe her. But the times that she did fall flat, for example, when she tells Kara, I'm cold, or that I don't feel well, or you know, a few few times in there, you kind of wonder if maybe they could have gotten a, gotten a little bit more out of her, but you have to work with what you got, I guess. Um, so, so as far as that goes, that was that was amazing. Um, so, let's talk about something that wasn't completely amazing right now. I'm gonna put this out for you. Uh, this story, okay. The only problem that I had with this with this game was just a way that they her handled certain aspects of the story. Um, so we'll talk about the story. Okay, in this story, you are these three characters, and as I explained, you have these three different roles, and at some point in time, these three people will, will converge, the worlds will collide with one another. Uh, Marcus will, at some point, begin to believe he should be free of, of uh, having to serve humans. Uh, Kara will do something to try to protect Alice, and, uh, from an abusive parent and have to make a decision should I continue to let this person uh, abuse this little girl or should I take care of her so she breaks from her programming and then Connor Connor is Connor Connor just goes wait a minute this is wrong I gotta fix this and I gotta figure out why these people are acting like this is my job it's my mission to stop these people from deviating from their program and as he grows he begins to question how far he should go to complete his mission and he and Hank you can choose to warm up to Hank you can choose not to but the whole buddy cop dynamic turns out to be something that is completely awesome matter of fact I think that uh, he is my favorite character he and Hank are my favorite two characters in this entire game uh, not that the other ones are bad but the buddy cop dynamic that develops between these two characters to me is amazing I I, I would look at it as maybe like uh, Turner and uh, not Turner and Hooch, <laughs> but but Tango and Cash, uh, or maybe like I don't know Hawaii Five O, uh, you know, or I don't know. Pick your favorite uh, buddy cop show. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the TV show that they did a few years ago, Almost Human, with Keith Urban, and uh, I forget who the android was supposed to be, but but they had a human and an android and they didn't get along for a while but then they started to understand one another and kind of got along and began to work together and understand each other and it kind of really reminds me of that and I and I, uh, I know you're angry, Daniel. and I really really liked uh, Connor as a character and and that whole dynamic um, but their worlds start to to collide and they start to wonder okay do should I be free from this uh, I feel emotions. Um, I feel like I'm not being treated fairly. I feel like I'm not being treated the right way. Uh, and to be fair, to be f completely fair, androids have to ride in the bus, in the back of the bus, in an android compartment. They're not allowed to sit with humans. They have to use the stairs instead of the escalator because they can't mingle with humans except for when they're told to do something or whatever. And as you go through the, through the, through the story, you will see. Uh, 
maybe some humans not treating their android uh, politely, screaming and yelling at them because they drop a, a, a bag of groceries, or screaming and yelling at them because uh, they don't clean fast enough, or screaming and yelling at them because uh, they took the jobs of the humans, which um, as you progress through the game, you find out that Detroit in this time frame there's millions of androids and, and they're taking all the jobs uh, from uh, away from the humans. There's something like 34% unemployment through the entire country and they're even debating on whether or not to go ahead and let androids play in sports and that upsets a lot of people. Uh, so so there's anger on both sides um, and it starts to, to come to a head during the game and uh, you as Marcus, you get to choose whether or not you're going to be peaceful about it, if you're going to be, you know, do demonstrations, or if you're going to be militant, if you're going to be a little more violent towards humans to get what you want. And and that brings me to uh, something else. During the story, I think the story is worth it. I don't think that... Let me, let me backtrack a little bit. Uh, I don't think that the writing had to be so heavy-handed in spots. Um, because I think if you keep bringing something up uh, and keep poking people with it, you're never going to heal old wounds that are there. You're never going to heal if you're just constantly throwing things in people's faces about, oh, well, look, this is what your people used to go through or this is what people went through. At some point in time, you just got to let things go and you got to let things heal. And I think that was my major problem with this writing, is that sometimes it was just so in your face uh, that it could be downright offensive to people. And I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's, that's the right way to go about it. But it did make you want to have an emotional connection with these characters, and it did make me want to want to help these characters, but I don't think it was right uh, to be so heavy-handed with it at times. Um, because all it will do is basically offend or make people angry but having said that um, that's where the power of choice comes in every little thing in this game every little choice that you make uh, will affect something down the line for one of these characters and I do mean every little tiny thing and let me give you an example of what I mean um, the I trust you. character of Kara. At one point in time, you have to make a decision. Am I going to let her continue to be, uh, let Alice, my, my the little girl I'm in charge of, be abused or not? Uh, am I going to rescue her from this abusive situation or am I not? Okay. And at some point in time, let's just be real here, you will understand if you play this game, Kara has to make a very real, very emotional decision and uh, you believe that it's the right decision when you make it, okay? Uh, whatever you choose to do, you will believe that it's the right decision to make, okay? Um, but but you have to decide if you're going to <coughs> save her. And in doing that, you maybe you run away from home with the little girl, okay? Uh, and then you have you're presented with a choice uh, and this is very early on so I'm not going to really spoil anything for you but you are presented with a choice you can sleep uh, in certain spots uh, for the night just for one night you're going to sleep somewhere because Alice is tired Alice is sleepy she needs things okay um, so you are given a choice between three spots you can try to uh, sleep in a motel uh, you can sleep in a car, an abandoned car, an abandoned parking lot, or you can sleep in an abandoned house. Uh, and each one of those choices presents you with another problem. Uh, for example, if you want to stay in a motel, you need money. Okay. Uh, if you want to stay in an abandoned house, you got to find a way to get into the abandoned house because it's behind a fence. If you want to stay in an abandoned car, uh, you can do that, but you have to you have to live with the consequences of each action. And for example, my first playthrough, I slept in the abandoned house. And I'm not going to spoil it for you, but at some point in time, Connor and the police show up, and Connor shows up 
and he searches the house. He finds us. We run from him, and he chases. And then at that point in time, you're taking over both characters. You're taking over Kara and Alice, and you're taking over Connor. And you are running from Connor, and Connor is chasing you. And depending on uh, how that chase works out, uh, you can either be hit by a car if you're Connor and die, uh, game over Connor, or you can uh, uh, make it across the road as uh, Kara and, uh, and, and Alice and um, continue on with your game, or you both can get hit by a car and game over Alice and, Ka and Kara. That's, that's the nature of the game. Um, but in my second playthrough, I decided to sleep in the car for the night. Uh, that choice presented me with something else. Connor and the police do show up, but uh, instead of dealing with Connor, instead of being chased by Connor, I have to avoid a uh, basically a dragnet that they've put over the entire city, that section where a whole bunch of cops are looking for us, and I have to make a few choices as I'm going along trying to avoid cops, and if I do it right... Uh, then I don't have to see Connor at all. Connor and, and Hank are looking for me, but they never find me. And and the game progresses from there. Connor goes. Can't, Connor and Hank go on to their next uh, case. And uh, and Kara and Alice go on to the next part of their story. So each and every single solitary choice that you make does have a lasting effect on how the story progresses uh, with with certain aspects of things. Um, you can choose to be peaceful, like I said with Marcus here, or you can choose to be not. Uh, and, and those consequences for each person around you uh, will matter. Uh, sometimes with, with amazing results, and then other times with not so amazing results and you have to live with those consequences that you that you make or at least that's what I thought uh, which brings me to one of the mechanics that I need to talk about there is a flow chart in each of the chapters that you play and what they have done in this game because a lot of people were like but I didn't want to do that and I I don't know what choice uh, you know, if I do a different choice, what outcome will it be? Well, they give you a flow chart, and each chapter has a flow chart that says, okay, if you make this choice, here's what happens, and if you make this choice, here's what happens, and, it's, and it gives you a chart. Okay, these are all the choices you made, and this is what happens, and then they show you little locked sections. Okay, you didn't make these choices, so these choices are not available to you. Um, and what you can do is, after the chapter, if you don't like the choices you made, I don't recommend this. I recommend playing the whole game through um, your first time and live with the choices you make. That is that is the recommendation that I have. But you do have the choice of uh, if you exit to the main menu and you select chapters and you go to the flow chart, you have a choice of reloading a checkpoint uh, and then making different choices uh, to affect the outcome of that chapter. Uh, so, and that flow choice flowchart is always presented to you at the end of a chapter to let you know this is what happened and you can always check to see what the rest of the world did or what your friends did if they have the game uh, and it, it it makes it fairly interesting you know you you know how many op options you still had in that chapter and to find each, each and every one it encourages multiple playthroughs um, I think I read somewhere that they have over 25 endings for this game uh, and I have only seen to this point I've only seen about two of them so there's a lot of replayability to be had uh, in this game so if you're one of those people that wants to have a reason to spend the money and play it several times then there you go there's a good reason why because you've got plenty of uh, plenty of uh, options uh, to play through um, I think I've said it here, but Connor and Hank were my favorites uh, as far as the, the buddy dynamic and the cop dynamic. They were my favorites. I kind of wish if they were going to do a sequel, they would do nothing but Connor and Hank. Okay. Um, that would be my choice. Uh, but that's not to say that Kara and 
Alice don't have an interesting story and that you won't believe uh, their story or that you won't enjoy their story. Uh, that's not to say that Marcus and his struggles are not real and they don't resonate. Matter of fact, they do resonate very, very well. Uh, it's very well written and you will care about each and every one of these um, characters. But uh, I will tell you, like I said before, that every choice does matter. I'll give you an example. Close to the end of the game, I'm given two options. And I'm not going to tell you what those two options are because I don't want to ruin it for you. But one of those options that you choose, uh, you would think would be the safer of the two. And it turns out not to be. And you may end up losing... Um, you, you, Kara may end up losing Alice. And Alice may end up losing Kara. And the the other characters that go along at some point with Kara and, and Alice. You may lose them all at the end of the game. So you have to, you have to choose. And you have to be careful uh, what you do. So... Um, Enough. I, I just, I cannot get over uh, how much this resonated with me, and, and part of the reason is because uh, I know all of you look at me on the on YouTube and everything, and y'all see uh, a gentleman who doesn't look like he's uh, had this problem before. But I'm a disabled person, so therefore, statistically, I'm in a minority, and I have dealt with. Uh, being bullied as a child in school. Uh, I have dealt with um, being bullied by authority figures like teachers in high school because I was different, because I walked with a cane. I got called stick boy um, in high school once. Uh, when I go out in a mall um, or a public place, sometimes with my wife, depending on where we are, I get funny looks from people sometimes. Why is she with him? And, uh, you know, why does he walk that way? Or, you know, all kinds of things. And from kids, that's okay. Kids don't know any better. What bothers me is when it's from adults who should know better. Um, so the story, I feel, will resonate with people who have had any kind of uh, emotional struggle. Uh, you will relate with this story, but be aware that this story is going to resonate with you. And it may bring up emotions that you thought maybe you dealt with. Uh, uh, you may f you may have to take a step back and 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 kind of deal with some stuff at some point in time because it will resonate on some level with somebody. Uh, I'm not saying that it'll cause you to be a revolutionary or anything like that, but it definitely will will. Uh, make you think, uh, and will make you emotional at times, and it will do what it's supposed to do uh, in that regard. But um, I still think it's a little bit heavy-handed. Uh, this is a warning for parents uh, that are that are uh, wanting their children or think that this game will be okay with uh, for their kids. Um, this game is rated mature over here in the United States and over in Europe it's rated Peggy 18. Um, mature here means anybody 17 and older can play this game uh, and they believe that they'll be mature enough to handle the themes that are in this game. Uh, to be to <clears throat> to let you know it is an extremely violent game especially from Connor's side because he's having to deal with people who have been murdered he reconstructs ki uh, crime scenes uh, and has to figure out how it happened, what happened, and stuff. And as he does that, uh, they explain a lot uh, in the way of diagrams and animations and things. So you will see acts of violence quite a lot. Um, you will see very tense and emotional situations uh, that involve firearms from time to time, uh, especially if you... Uh, any of these characters, if you carry, if you decide to carry a gun at any point in time, you will see very tense situations, and you have to make uh, very adult choices. There is nudity in this game from time to time, or at least partial nudity from from time to time. There are sexual innuendos, innuendos rather, in this in this uh, game, uh, and there are very mature themes to be dealt with in this game. It is very intellectual game. Uh, so if you think your children are 
you know, if you're okay with that and your children can play it, then fine. But I just want you guys to be aware that there is a reason why this is considered a mature game. And if you're going to play it, please be aware of that. Uh, they drop the F-bomb quite a lot, especially Hank uh, in this game. Um, he, he does it quite a lot in one scene in particular in his house. He does it at least 16 or 17 times. It is funny, but he does it quite a lot. Uh, and I let my I let my wife hear it the other day, and 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 I and I didn't mean to let Ryan hear it, but I did. So, shh, hush, shush. <laughs> He's excited because he thinks it's funny, but but I just want you guys to know it is a mature rated game. Uh, so please, if you decide to play it, please be aware of that. Do I think it's worth playing? Yes, I think it's worth playing. Do I think that you need to spend 60 bucks on it? No, I don't. Right now, you can get $30. You can get this for $30 on Amazon. You can get it for $30, uh, roughly used uh, or so, on uh, at GameStop or just about anywhere else. Uh, $60. Would I have paid $60 to play this game when it came out? Probably. Uh, it's that good. Uh, but it is definitely better than Heavy Rain. If the, if you are not a, da a David Cage fan, uh, I, this may not help you because there's still quick time events. Uh, a lot of them. Uh, the control scheme is a little weird. Um, but as far as a narrative goes, as far as the story itself goes, the characters go, I think it's worth your time. It's also one of the better of David Cage's game. Beyond Two Souls, I did not like at all. Uh, but I decided to try this one, and I, I'm very pleasantly surprised at this one. Uh, I think that that the writing is much better. I think that the characters are much better than in Beyond Two Souls. Uh, it is even better than Heavy Rain in spots. Uh, but you are going to have to deal with quick time events. If you don't want to do too many of them, uh, you can switch to casual and have to deal with maybe X and circle and maybe one of the shoulder buttons once or twice but that's it uh, so keep that in mind as well um, My instructions are to accompany you to the crime scene. other than that guys I hope you enjoyed it uh, this has been a little bit longer than I wanted it to uh, be but uh, I hope that this helps you guys I hope that if you want to play it this gives you a reason to go ahead and make that jump if you're thinking about playing a David Cage game and this is your first time, this might be the best one to try uh, to kind of give you an idea of how he writes, what he does, uh, and, and see if you like this kind of game. I personally liked this game because of the narrative and because of the, the very well-written story and the fact that I do care about all three of these main characters here. Um, uh, but... I'll have to be very, very careful uh, on his next game because it may not resonate with me. But this definitely is a game that I think you guys would enjoy. So I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, we will try to be uh, live with you guys as soon as possible. Right now I'm dealing with virtual mom and doctor's appointments and all kinds of stuff. So, But I wanted to get this out for you guys. Hope you have a great day, and we will see you again real soon, okay? Thanks.